We've got some hey, I'm Luis. And I'm Luis. And you're listening to the Content is Profit podcast. We spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to create content that turns into profit. And today, we're bringing them to you so you can take action immediately and start creating real content momentum. If you'd like to learn more about how to turn your content into profit, go to contentisprofit.com. Oh. Oh yeah. Today we live in a noisy world, especially in social media where everybody wants to be loud and get other people's attention. But today's guest is noisy in the most special way. Her noise has inspired and empowered many others to live a life they won't regret. Let me tell you, we had a 15 minute conversation with today's guest. And as soon as we were done, we just wanted to take over the world. Yes. I'm not kidding. Oh. I was on top. She is a cancer survivor that is brave enough to share her truth with others and help them find and cross their own finish line. Today's guest helps people live better and longer by making fitness understandable, attainable, and fun. She also announces the biggest and best running events around the United States of America. Not only that, she is also a book author and has worked as a spokesperson for Disney, Oakley, Tropicana, and many others. I need to add here, she has done some incredible, amazing things. She's still Ooh. doing some amazing, amazing things that they weren't mentioned in this intro. So we're going to be we're have to dive in. Into we're dive in. But I'm so excited for this. Please welcome Arthur of My Noisy Cancer Comeback founder of fitness.com and the morning mile which i would i would love to talk about mm -hmm. that and and mm -hmm. your next running partner is <laughs> Welcome. Possibly my most fun intro ever. <laughs> Let's go. Thank you. We, we need to turn possibly into the most, you know, fun. <laughs> most, saying, okay, the most. <laughs> you win. Oh, thank you so much for coming on. We are on to have you here and, and share your message and your story, which is so powerful. Thank you, Fonsi, for making this happen. And, you well, know, thank you, Larry, yeah. for introducing I us. To fit. Yes, thank you, everybody. I'm so happy to be here. Yes. Thank you. And for those wondering, mm -hmm. here is a book. If you are listening, go to Facebook right now and get your copy because it's amazing. I'm halfway through it right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling mm -hmm. you, like the level of honesty in this book mm -hmm. is so transparent. Fitz. And, you know, like literally, I feel like in the first like, three pages, people can already tell the type of person mm -hmm. who, uh, that you are, which is amazing. Oh, um, nice. Uh, and I found that funny because in the 15 minute call that we had, <laughs> you shared with me such an amazing story that I was like, wow, I feel like I've known her now for five years. Right. <laughs> and I would love for you, you know, to have that connection with the person that is listening to this right now. So, you know, if it's who are you and what has inspired you in your life to do what you're doing right now? Um, well, you did a good job of introducing what I do professionally. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm just, I'm just a very noisy, happy person that, um, likes to help others live better and longer. I'm, I'm, I really truly care about people and, you know, fitness is the way that I help. And I like to do it in a way that makes, makes sense for people. You know, sometimes fitness can feel very complicated and confusing and stressful and expensive, and it doesn't have to be. So, you know, I, ha I share a lot of science. I've got a pretty impressive education that I'm very proud of. And I'm always, uh, I'm always working on learning more. But yeah, yeah. I take people to uh, a place where they understand fitness, they understand how to go about moving their body, watching what they put in their mouth, mm -hmm. and then hopefully send them out on athletic adventures. And that's really nice. one of the nice things about what I do is encourage people to do more and be more. Unfortunately, with my work as a uh, race announcer, I'm able to physically be there and in a very noisy fashion, tell them how proud I am of them. It's a pretty awesome experience. And wow. hi, Lori and Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Th that's amazing. You know, so my brother here, he is absolutely obsessed with Tough Mudders and those type of yeah. races. And yeah. I've been to a few with him. <laughs> and honestly, one of the 
people that first made an impression was the announcer of the race, that person that would stand in front in front of everybody and he, he would inspire us. And as soon as he was done, I was like, you ready know, sound the horn because <laughs> I'm so ready to go. I cannot stand still here for any more, any more time. Yeah. So how do you get to that point? I'm curious, like what led you to want to be in front of all these people and make the good type of noise that motivates them you know, to start their race? You know, I, I started teaching fitness at 14 and that continuously progressed into teaching fitness on television and then teaching small presentations and then teaching massive presentations. And what I've found is the more the merrier. You know, it's if you've got a group of 20 people together, they may feel a little awkward hooting and hollering and getting a little rowdy. But when you put 10,000 people together, they feel yeah. extremely comfortable uh, letting themselves go. And I really just get to play ringleader. You know, I, I love to have a good time and anything I can do, including throwing myself under the bus, I'm constantly making fun of me, which makes everybody seem to have an even better time. Uh, so yeah, it, it uh, helps to have no ego and, you know, sincerely look out for the athletes in your corral. And it sounds like the guy you were, you got to run with at Tough Mudder did it right, because quite often it's very awkward if the announcer <laughs> isn't doing the right thing. And if the, yeah. uh, if the announcer is the right announcer, it should be an awesome experience for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, some of my past has been in the fitness industry, you know, I, I ran a few fitness studios and, you know, you had that nice. 20 people group and, and it is really challenging, right? Like I never coach, I manage, but I had the coaches, right? And sometimes we had yeah. to do these events and it's like, you know, five people over here, 10 people over there, 15 over there. And it's like, oh man, like this is something that's challenging. And sometimes, you know, I related to what we do now as an entrepreneur, as entrepreneurs, right? And sometimes yeah. we have these business owners that mm -hmm. have to corral like these audiences, right? Or their dream clients and then talk talk to them inspire them into the next decision into like okay this is actually going to turn your life around this is going to make better so i i find your message truly inspiring because we can definitely take a lot of lessons from that from the fitness world into you know day to day uh in the business side of things so thank you for Absolutely. bringing that. yeah yeah I, I, i'm a little curious on you know, like I, I love this, right? And and I'm curious about your noisy brand, right? Because I'm I'm reading right now the comments, and Laurie here, she's like, Team, Team noisy, noisy is amazing. And yeah. You know, at the beginning of the intro, we mentioned that we live in a world that is is very noisy, and people do want to be noisy, and some of them not necessarily for the the best of reasons. But I find yours extremely inspiring and and a very special way of being noisy, right? Again. Shout out to your book. Everybody go get it. I know. Thank you. Um, so I'm curious, where does that came from? The, the noisy team right here? Uh, well, personally, I've made my entire living, almost all of it on a microphone. And so that's where it is. I'm just constantly making noise. Sometimes it's a talking kind mm -hmm. of noise. And more often than not, it's a big raucous type of noise. Oh, almost always a happy noise. Sometimes I get a little aggressive and poke people in the chest, but only because they need it and usually because they want it. My other nickname yeah. is Bossy, and I make no apologies for that because, you know, the things I tell people to do are things that are good for them. And again, the only people I'm bossing around are people that came to me for the guidance. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, we, I'm noisy. And then Rudy Novotny is actually online walking or watching. Hi, Rudy. Rudy is my partner in noise and race announcing. So we don't always work together. But frequently we do. And I think we're pretty extraordinary as a team. I love it. The, I, I, I think I've actually, he's in the book, right? Oh yeah. He wrote the foreword to the book and, and I yeah. tell a lot of Rudy's stories. He was, he was, and I just couldn't be great, more grateful for his effort and support during my um, cancer battle. I love amazing. it. Thank you, Rudy, if you're uh, still listening. <laughs> as, as we, the, as I talked to you, cause this is the first time I interacting with you. It's like on my end, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and, and it, I feel like you know your mission. Like you know, like what am I here to do? I'm I laser focused. Exactly, you're laser focused. Was it always like that? Um, you know, it's interesting. I started teaching fitness at 14, and I knew I loved it, and I knew I wanted to help people. It didn't really dawn on me that I was going to do it as a full time career until yeah. the end of my undergrad time. I thought I was going to go to law school. I mean, I. My fitness career at that point was really overshadowed by my love of my country. I'm just, 
I couldn't mm -hmm. be a bigger patriot. Nothing's more important to me than America. Nothing at all, period, end of story. And so I, I naively thought in order to serve my country, if I wasn't going into the military, I had to be a lawyer to run for office. And then mm -hmm. once I learned that that wasn't true and law school <laughs> would be a really bad fit for me, um, <laughs> Duh. I mean, it's just, I don't know. I was young and naive. I can't explain it better than that. But I did have yeah. the revelation that I was already doing what I love to do. And Luis, you know that fitness quite often is just relegated to a job for some people. It's an hourly wage with no benefits or sick time, et cetera, no, no longevity. And so I decided I wanted to actually do it as a profession, make a career out of it. And I figured out how to do it on large scale in order to make a fine living that I could have a, a home and a car and take my kids to Disney World once a year. Yes, wow. let's go. When you when you come next time, let us know too. It's like we are season pass holders, you know. I that, know. Yeah. So, I'm, so. I'm, I'm, I'm actually very excited that we're like almost neighbors, you know. Uh, almost. We're very close. And you're right, it's yeah. very cold today. <laughs> I know. We're, Hopefully one day we can go for a, for a run, but you're gonna have to take it easy on us. Yeah, sorry, Fancy. Be before you go into <laughs> your like awesome questions, because you're the better person to do that. Oh, thank I you. I just want to highlight that you you mentioned something that you made the decision, right? A lot of yeah. people are like mm -hmm. out there, that, you know, trying things out, and you we were doing it for like three, almost four years, right? Like Chinese object syndrome, and we're like going from here to here, like, and sometimes even yeah. in life, we don't really know exactly yeah. what we want, right? And you were like. I don't think this is going to be a fit for me because, you know, this is the way I act. This is the way that happens. I'm going to make the decision to pursue this. And then you made it happen. Right. And, and you're like, I'm, I'm sure it was not just made it happen. I'm sure it was a lot of hard work and challenges along the way. But you persisted. You were consistent. Right. And there was a bigger why with your family and your daughters and, and, and everything else. Do you remember? a very uh, specific challenge along the way that maybe was like, man, like this is it, like this is it, I'm, I'm over this. I might, should I go back, right, to another option? Do you ever <laughs> that? Well, I can tell you that you're right. I have been extremely deliberate with my profession. I always, I'm a very deliberate person. When I want something, I get something. And God help the people that get in my way. It just is no good for them. Um, I would actually say that this year has been my most challenging year because, my career re revolves around mass gatherings and it's disappeared. And, and I have found myself grasping for straws to try and figure out what do I do? I lost 55 events. I lost a fortune. And so now I have the book, which is great, but I traditionally don't make a living off of the consumer. I don't even really like taking money from the consumer because I like just giving out information for free. So Yes. Now I'm pivoting and, you know, I've, I've always done a lot of corporate speaking and so forth. So now I'm trying to, you know, reintroduce myself to corporate America and letting them know that I'm available. And that's what we do as entrepreneurs. We figure it out, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Yeah, no, that that is a extremely good point. Good question. Good oh, question. thank you. Yes. All right. <laughs> we made it. Fitz made it. You know, it's like I, I've obviously noticed throughout your story that you have a knack for for helping others. And, yeah. you know, the first part of this question is, were you always like that? Have you always had that, you know, feeling inside of you that you want to help other people, whether that is succeed or helping them with their problems? And the other side of the question is like, you know, often a lot of people when they come into business is, and we've talked about this before, is that that greed is a little bit of a factor, right? On, I want to make money. I need to make a living. For example, us, we were in a, in a, in a place of need when we started our business, right? We right. needed money. But along the way, we realized, wow, we can actually impact people. And we believe in what we do so much that now we are reaching out to people because they're like, hey, like, this can really help you out. And I'm curious whether it was like that for you or, again, you started with helping the other person in mind first. So I am very service oriented in all regards. I mean, I'm the one driving my friends around when they're sick, taking them to doctors. And I, I'm a caregiver. I like to take care of people. It's in my nature. However, you said one word that I'm going to do a little battle with. I do not believe the need or desire to make money is greed. It's self-preservation. It's a necessity. Mm -hmm. And when you give away a product or service without charging for it, quite often people devalue it. So if I give you a free book, you're far less likely to read it than if you spend $27.99 on the website 
to purchase the book. I mean, we all have these goodie bags full of crap we got at a festival handout with samples that we just leave in the corner and we don't use. And so, um, yeah. yeah, the the trade of money for product or service actually makes the experience better, I think. So, yeah, I mean, I, I love serving people. That is number one. But right up there is, you know, I have to eat. I apparently my children, they they want to eat every single day. <laughs> so making a living, I I feel good about that. It used to be hard taking checks from people, but um, now I feel really good about providing great services and then feeding the kids. I, I love that. I love that. And sorry, I know you have a comment about this, but first, this is what we call a, well, First, uh, a, a yeah. standing, the ovation. Is standing ovation. Of yeah. course. Absolutely. And then the other one, is it this one? Yeah. Come on, Francis. Yes. Get it this right, is man. what we call a golden boulder because it's not even a golden <laughs> nugget. It's just so big that it's a golden boulder. Yeah. And Fitz, I, I love this because that was actually a, mm -hmm. a limiting belief that we had. We were so afraid to actually charge people um you know and i think at first it had to do because we weren't focused enough on exactly what we were doing right. um but the belief on money itself was a very big one for us to overcome and i agree 100 yeah. um percent with what you said and i think i'm actually going to start using that as well don't worry okay. i'll quote you every single time <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, but it, it, it's it's amazing and yeah why well, I, I'm gonna let my, before asking the question, I'm gonna let my brother go because if not, he's <laughs> not gonna be able sure? to talk. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, we're brothers. We think the same way. I think that comment that you said was, uh, you know, great versus self preservation. And, and I love that when we get ideas, our challenge, this is perfect. So don't worry. Whenever you feel like you need to challenge an idea, oh, do it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, and 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 I think yes, I, I think that evolved into self preservation because it's like, man, like we we need this to make it happen, right? And and yeah. at first it was about saying yes as much as we could, but then mm -hmm. that allowed us to like see the bigger picture, and then it's like, okay, now we do have to focus, right? And and, yeah. and I feel like we could have done that a little bit earlier, but that's okay. But yeah. also what Fonzie was saying about that belief, right? So. Um, I'll let you do the question in just a second, but why do you think people have so much, like, um, why do you think so much, so many people are entrepreneurs, right? Are having a hard time with that. Like, I feel like at the beginning when people start their own ventures and their own adventures, right. Or they start to teaching something in exchange of money, they have a hard time yeah. at least charging something for it. Yeah. Um, it's fear of rejection. I think very mm. much fear of rejection. So if you, yeah, Rudy says, do what you love, the money will follow. I completely agree. Yeah, if you're offering up a free service, people are far less likely to reject you, right? But if you yeah. say, hey, I can do this for you or you can have my product and it's gonna cost you X, Y, Z, someone may say no. And what I learned very um, long ago, and, and I have a bad habit of learning the hard way. So I, I completely <laughs> confess to being someone who's made a bunch of really dumb mistakes or had all the misconceptions, but, yeah. Um, I used to um, be a full contact kickboxer competitively. So I fought for about yeah. 10 years and mm. I never feared it. I never feared walking into an arena, standing in front of thousands of people with a mouthpiece in and going toe to toe with someone who wanted to knock me unconscious. It just never crossed my mind to be afraid. However, yeah. when it came to business, I quite regularly shied away from asking for opportunities. And I had an epiphany it's a real long story short, but there was an, a magazine I wanted to write articles for. They kept writing articles about me and screwing them up royally, spelling my name wrong, making up information. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to write for them for years and I was too chicken to ask. And it was just after this one incredibly br brutal training session where it was me versus four different people. I would train, I would fight every round and they would fight every fourth round. So as you can imagine, Wow. Uh, it was yeah. intense and they were bigger than me and stronger than me. And I, I, I beat them all up pretty good, but good I got job. my Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I, I left, I got my Jeep and I had this magazine on my passenger side uh, seat and I was so annoyed by it. And I thought, Oh, I wish I could just write the article. And then I thought you dummy. If, if I call the editor and say, Hey, can I write an article? What's the worst that can happen? And the worst that would have been able would have happened is that this guy would have said no, and which sounds like the scariest word in the world. Yeah. And then I thought, hey, dummy, there's no bruising, no bleeding, no broken bones involved in the word no. 
you do all of this really terrifying physical stuff without flinching. Why are you afraid to pick up the phone? So lesson learned. I picked up the phone about 10 minutes later. I called. I said, hey, Bob, it's Fitz. And he greeted me warmly. He knew exactly who I was. I said, hey, I'd really like to write an article for you guys for your next issue. He goes, oh, that would be great. Uh, how much do you want for it? <laughs> I thought, oh, my God. He said yes. And now he's going to give me money. And uh, and I, I learned at that point. Now, mind you. Um, that ugly little fear monster still creeps in on occasion. You know, I'm still making calls. I still have to do pitches and sell yeah. myself. And it feels a little stressful because I don't like to sell myself. But um, the second I recognize I'm being a chicken, I, I pick up the phone and I, I just make it happen. I'd much rather have a no, a big, loud, angry no than to not ask for the opportunity. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so good. Yeah. What an amazing story. And thank you for sharing. <laughs> That, that is just such a great analogy, too, on how we're not afraid to put ourselves in, you know, physical harm, but internal harm. We're so afraid of, right? We're so yeah. afraid of that rejection. It's so difficult. I mean, earlier today, I was listening to a show with Eric and uh, and Joe on the on brand stuff, and they were talking about every day we jump on a car, which is at it could be a bomb. <laughs> Like we see it on fuel. we yeah. see it on fuel every single day. Yeah. And and now yet we're afraid of making these decisions that are not gonna harm us physically, right? Really How good. crazy is that it brings brings it into perspective, right? And you know, we've mentioned this on the show many times, like no, it's like and we were so afraid of taking a no. I remember Fonzie the first time went out selling on the on his suit and stuff, and he's like, Oh my god, why did they say no? Like this is gonna be horrible, right? Uh but but now we take him as, as samples and it's just a nudge in the right direction. We're like, okay, yeah. no, here, okay, sweet, let me go here and like yeah. no okay another notch I, right i actually prefer getting a no like if i get a no now i prefer that than not asking because if i don't ask i have that feeling inside that is like it's already a no is the what if mm -hmm. right i, I have yeah. that uncertainty inside but if they say no at least i don't have that anymore and i'm like okay like i feel like i, I still move a step forward if they say no yeah you know with life with work and with cancer i made all decisions on the past the path of least regrets. And that's mm. how, you know, I feel like I'm going to continue operating moving forward is, will I regret not doing this? If so, then I have to, I have no choice. Oh, man. That's amazing. I, I love, I love that path of least regret. I'm definitely going <laughs> to adopt that life philosophy as well. Thank you, Fitz. Ah, it's and, so awesome. and you know, like this, this no thing, right? This fear that we have inside, those are all self-limiting beliefs that we all have, right? right? In, in a yeah. way. And we've seen that actually on the content side. For us, at first, we spent three years knowing that we had to, you know, to put it in your word, in your words, be noisy to share our message. Yet we didn't do it, right? We were so afraid of either people judging us or rejecting us. We were just actually we were just putting a story in our head that didn't even yeah. exist. And now I can see that in other aspects of life as well. I'm like, wow, these self beliefs are just like so ingrained in, yeah. in our in our hearts, literally. So how do you go about pushing other people to, you know, crush those self beliefs? And especially, and I think this is a good point because again, I think this is a good moment for you to actually um, share with everybody what the morning mile is. Cause I feel like you're helping all those people as well, right? All those kids you know, get rid of their own self beliefs. Right, right. So, you know, with adults, I do a lot of poking in the chest and I'm quite aggressive about it. And I have, yeah, I have carte blanche to be aggressive because the people that I'm working with know I love them. So I get in their face and, you know, I tell yeah. them the truth. It's always a combination of science and um, rationale. Right. I'm not mm -hmm. ever saying anything that's really far fetched or cranky. I just got to say, Hey, pay attention. And, and they yeah. agree with children. Gosh, I just love kids so much, much like people love puppies. And I do love the puppies, but <laughs> I love kids desperately. And, and the second I started teaching fitness, I also started volunteering to teach fitness to Girl Scout troops and youth athletics. Okay. So it's just always been on my heart. But I think it's important now to get to children before they become 30 and overweight and think, oh, crap, what do I do now? You know, uh, fitness is actually quite simple. You know, I say I have a master's degree and the most simple, stupid science in the world, but it really is not a whole heck of a lot more than move your body. Awesome. Watch what you put in your mouth, get plenty of sleep and remove the cranky people from your life. So we, we can teach them that at a young age that, Hey, you could just wake up, 
and go for a walk or a run around your block, doesn't need any skill, any fancy equipment. And then you never have to deal with weight issues and you never have to deal with diabetes or heart disease or blood pressure, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, it's yeah. important to um, do that. And clearly not every parent has the know-how to raise healthy children. So, you know, the Morning Mile has given me access to 400 schools around the world and wow, yeah. hundreds of thousands of children who have completed millions and millions of miles. And, you know, the success stories I know about are extraordinary. The success stories I don't know about thrill me even more. Wow. Yeah. So, this, talk, this talk is, about impact, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, first uh, of all. yeah. Amazing. Thank you for for all that that you do because mm -hmm. clearly, you know. And we talk about the hourglass effect. Like, you know, you impact one person, and then that one person is going to turn around. And uh, yeah. how many others? So, thank you so much. That's so so needed. Yeah. For um, those listening, that's another upside of being noisy and sharing your yes. message and going for what you want. No. Yeah, and and my vision is is although I love helping individuals, my entire career is laser focused on mass impact. So I do very mm -hmm. few things that help only one person. And when we talk about content, my efforts are almost exclusively um, done in a way where many people can absorb the information. So the book is an example. My YouTube channel. When I'm on national television, you know, yes. by 8 a.m., I've reached a couple million people. When I'm at races, I hit thousands or tens of thousands. And so what feeds my soul is Incredible. huge amounts of people and relaying at least one thing that um, I'll give providing them with a tool they could use to live better and longer. I, I love it because all this is fueled by that that one desire, right? And you're like, okay, how do I actually get to million people? And then, okay, I yeah. need to go to TV. Perfect. Let's I go to TV. I them down. <laughs> them down and I'm like, hey, pay attention to me. And that's great. I mean, we call that, we have this hashtag called hashtag table face in Venezuela. <laughs> in Venezuela, you know, it's, it's kind of tabla in Spanish and it's like, meaning it's like, go for it. Go after what you want. Go yeah. ask for it, right? And yeah. and I love this because you are literally impersonate, impersonation of hashtag table face, which we love. Oh, thank you. And, and, you know, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's not a physical change. It's, like, <laughs> it's more of a a, a a state, right? A, it's a, it's a, it's a, I think a it's state, a state of being. A state yeah. of being, okay. yes. Okay, yeah. so, table face. That's my new thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thank you. <laughs> now, uh, with with obviously your mission and what you do, and like this, uh, the, the morning mile, for example, you you are creating an environment, right? And and uh, and I'm very curious, right? Because when people are in like the ideal environment for them, like that's when they thrive too, right? And you're like that voice that leads that environment. How important has an environment been for your personal development mm. and uh, uh, to your community, right? You know what? I feed off of the community I'm engaged in. You know, it's interesting with runners. Runners aren't just the typical runners we imagine from 1978, and they're all in their little skimpy dolphin shorts and high socks. <laughs> runners right now are actually include millions and millions of walkers. And when mm. I announce, I'll use LA Marathon for an example. We had 27,000 yeah. registered runners this year. Beautiful. Maybe one or two percent run the race exclusively, but there's about 90% of the people that do a combination of walking and running in various uh, degrees. And then there's a good eight to 10 percent who do only walking. And I love them so much. I love our speedsters. I love the people in the front. We call them the elites or the pros, and they're impressive. No doubt. I give them all the credit in the world, but the people that yeah that make me a better person. The people I cannot wait to see finish the race are the back of the Packers. Yeah. They're overweight. They're, they're all their joints are wrapped up with 82 pounds of some sort of tape. And um, they're 90 or there's all these reasons why they shouldn't have even shown up at the start line, but they did. And the second they start, they show up at the start line, I become their best friend, or at least I feel like it. I feel like, oh, I love them. That's my favorite person in the world. And I can point to them all and go tell you exactly why I love each of them. And so as they make their way to the finish line, you know, my, my uh, praise, my welcome becomes more and more sincere because I yeah. truly admire these people. It's, it's just being around them gives me a much higher standard to live up to. Awesome. That's, that's amazing. I, I, yeah. I just remember a story. You, you literally just remember a story I feel like I, I forgot and it's it just represents exactly what you said or yeah. first tough mother run I don't <laughs> think it, it I don't know if you remember that yeah. it was actually here in Jacksonville at the moment I was living in Texas 
And I, my brother's like, hey, there's this amazing run. Let's go do it. It's like 12 miles. I'm like, dude, I've never run that much in my life. But let's go. Let's do it. It's going to be fun. <laughs> nobody right? wanted to come with me if it's nobody. I asked legit like 30 people. I'm like, and they're like, no, man, like, that's crazy. Don't, don't <laughs> talk, <why>? talk <laughs> about rejection right there. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I came here, we do the race and we had a blast, right? And the first thing I noticed, it was the environment of people supporting each other. And yeah. I was like, wow, this is so motivational. Yeah. And when we crossed the finish line, this person was like, hey, we still have people on the course. And would you like to volunteer in one of the obstacles? And we're like, yes, of yes, course. Just tell us which one. And there's this obstacle called the Everest, which is pretty much like a big ramp going up. Yeah, it's like very a slippery, right? And you have to run and pretty much climb it, just like hold yourself. I've and been push there, it. yeah. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so we were there and we helped everybody that was left. And then we were waiting for like 30 minutes. Nobody came. We were waiting for like 45 minutes. Nobody came. And mm -hmm. we told the guy, hey, is, it, is the race over? We don't see anybody. It's like, no. no, there's one more person in the now course. Now the race is just getting good. Yeah. Yes, it's so and, good. and we were like, wow, there's still someone out there. Awesome. That Let's just wait for them, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember I see the person coming around the, the, the curve, and it was someone that you wouldn't imagine in a race, right? And yeah. I, I, don't, I don't intend overweight. to Overweight. Yeah, no. I, it's yeah, it was someone that was overweight. Okay. And as soon as I saw her, yeah. I was like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. Someone just came to this event. I can't even imagine, you know, the the challenge that she was facing inside and yeah. all the thoughts about quitting probably halfway right. through the race. Yet she still did, made it to the yeah. very last obstacle. And when she she had the option to go around it and she was yep. like, no, I'm going to yeah. do it. Good and it was like five of us volunteering and we're like, and we're going to help you do it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like. Is that what you're talking about? That is spirit, that yeah. environment, right? There. It was so exciting. Yeah. And we managed to help her over the Everest, right? And she was so grateful. She yeah. went on. She finished the race. And I think, I, I don't know how I forgot about that story, but that is <laughs> literally, that embodies the power of environment, right? Yeah, because for sure. something that I learned lately is that motivation, yet even, like, even though the feeling of being motivated is amazing, it's a little bit unreliable because in the morning we wake up all excited to go out for a run, but then night hits and we're like, oh, I'm tired, yeah. right? But if yeah. you see yourself with people that are going to push you to the next level and they're like, let's go, let's do it, then you are going to go and cross that finish line as well. Well, professionally, I can tell you that last year when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, and which is terrifying, absolutely terrifying and it just terrifying is probably the best word I could use. Um, yeah. and, and you're confused and you're just not sure what's going to happen. I made the decision right away that I was not going to miss my races. So I knew I was going to be in for mega doses of chemo and mega doses of radiation and some surgeries, which is all is horrible sounding. And we know what happens to a lot of people yeah. with chemo. Um, but there's actually on my social media sites, there's a video, it's called I Have Breast Cancer, and it's on fitness.com and my social uh, fitness on Facebook. But I look back at that video, and there I was with still my long golden locks, and I'm staring into the camera telling people, listen, I've got mm. this disease, I'm going to be fine, I don't want your pity, you can root for me, but I am not missing my races, I am not missing my events, I'm going to show up, I'm going to perform as expected, and I'm going to be fine. And so... I, it was kind of cute because I was so naive. I had no idea what was actually going to go on <laughs> with my yeah. my treatment and my health, but I didn't miss a race. I never missed a flight. I never missed an event. I never missed an opportunity to stand at a finish line, hug thousands of strangers, or run back and forth those finish lines. I was sick as a dog, but I was fueled by my community. I would I would spend so the night on the hotel bathroom floor, sick, and then my alarm would go off at four a.m. and I'd put on my my little race announcer outfit and go on to my stage. And no matter how sick I was, the second I stood on that stage, it was like someone flipped my on switch and I had all this runner fueled go-go juice, adrenaline. Yeah. And then I got to perform at a pretty high level. I, I don't yeah. think anyone around me thought I missed a beat. And that's because my community was so extraordinary. The profession I chose, the profession I created was... Uh, that of my dreams. So yeah, it, it matters that you choose a career you love and to do it with people you love. Yeah. 
Yes, wow. I mean, I do believe that that's the only way that you can operate like that, right? Like, what's gonna get you up? What's gonna? Are you excited? We get to do this. Like, we yeah. get to get yeah. up and and help people. That like, you get to get up and make a massive impact, right? So I would have been I, devastated had I missed any. I, I would have been devastated if I missed five minutes of any of my events. They're that yes. good. Ah, so wow, good. That, that's impressive. We, we need to sign up for the next race that you're gonna be there. And we're yes. gonna be like, Let's of course, go. yeah, everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we need uh, yeah, to for sure. Yeah, that's it. We're family now. Uh, as as we wrap up the show, wait, wait, wait real quick. Sorry, sorry, real quick. Uh, I just want to make here a, a ooh, comment because I know a lot of turn, people you turn. <laughs> that are listening right now, right? You might find yourself in in the online world, right? Mm. And people have a tendency in the online world to try to do things by themselves. And it's not like you're going into a room and you know hanging with a bunch yeah. of people trying for them right. to push you forward. So it is important for you to go out there and actually be a part of a community, find a community that's going to support your goals yes, yes. and that they're going to push you forward as well. We were that that type of people. We when I started <laughs> into the digital world, Fitz, I'm not I'm not kidding. My old <laughs> my own thought was. I'm going to make money sitting in the couch in my underwear. How fun is that? Right. Like wow. I'm not going to have to deal with anybody. Right. Uh, exactly. To, to Fitch is like, no, that doesn't sound fun at all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that was my thought process. I'm like, I don't have to yeah. deal with like yeah. other people. Right. And the more I, I, you know, I, I dove into the online world. Guess what? I learned that community is just, if not the most important pillar, one of the most important pillars out there. Yeah. And if you don't have a professional community, so maybe there are people that just work in an isolated fashion and that can be okay as long as you have another community waiting for you, whether it's your, your CrossFit gym or your knitting yeah. club or your, you know, yes. we love animals group, whatever it is, it's important to have some people in your life. And um, yeah, it matters. People matters. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Now, Fitz, uh, what would be like your number one action point to get people? I mean, you you probably said so many, obviously, mm -hmm. through the show and in your life. But it, like, is there a, like a one action point that you would tell like somebody I, I just met? I, so I have. Let's do that in, in two categories because I want right first in the fitness category. What would be your action point for people? And then in their noisy category, right? In in being noisy out in the world and share their message. What would be that action point? So, and I'm action point, uh, advice. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. It could be advice. Yeah. Okay. Advice. okay. Uh -huh. yes. As far as fitness goes, y'all just have to stop making excuses. There are almost none that are valid. So if you were in a body cast today, fine. But if both of your legs are broken, not okay. You can still do something cool with your upper body. There's, there's always an opportunity to do something to become better and you should do that thing. As far as in the noisy category, advice for noisy people? For for people that maybe are a little bit afraid of sharing their message, of sharing their message and impacting into, other people with, yeah. with their own experience. Yeah, uh, I would fear never speaking my mind. I think that is a much greater risk to you individually you know if you vanish tomorrow i just i just had one of my very good friends um pass away she had an aneurysm and perhaps i mean thankfully for her for her and her family she was a very successful woman who was a contributor and and she did everything she wanted she li had a life well lived but yeah. what if it all ended tomorrow and you hadn't spoken your mind what if you oh. just kind of faded away and never made your mark. I think that's terrifying. So yeah. again, keep in mind, if there's no bleeding, no broken bones, no bruising involved, go for it. If there's, failure is guaranteed if you do not try. Oh, so good. Wow. Thank yeah. you for sharing. And of course, we're sorry to hear about, about your friend. Yeah. Um, yeah. But thank you so much. It has been beyond inspiring. And yeah. I hope you consider us now part of your community as well. Oh my we gosh. Yes, we're going to have to get together. We're so close. Two hours away. Sure. That's nothing. Yeah, For that's sure. nothing. It's a, it's a little road trip. Now, this last question, probably favorite question. Where will you be? And I'm going to reframe this a little bit, right? Where will you be if you did not make noise? Um, there's no possible way I wouldn't be making noise. It's just, <laughs> it's an impossible <laughs> thing yeah it does that place doesn't exist is that ingrained in it. you is is like is is that 
I mean, that's you then. That's it's, like I know exactly who I am, and I'm very noisy. I am very bossy. I'm very committed to what <laughs> I do. So yeah, there is no place where I am not noisy. I love, I love it. Wow. Yes. Th thank you for yeah. sharing that with us. You know, we get we get to do this. We get to connect with people like you. So I, if you're listening right now, if you're if you're watching, like I encourage you, find that message, test it out, be be loud, be noisy, find your community, your environment. So many good lessons. If it's it has been a pleasure. Uh, where yeah. be, be, before yeah, before, yeah, before, this, before, before this, okay. you ask that, just, just, I also just, want to encourage okay. people to go and connect with it and get her book, well, my gonna, noisy that's cancer that's comeback. That's All what right, I was gonna say. I was gonna be like, hey, Fitz, <laughs> where can people find you? <laughs> okay, so ideally they'll go directly to fitzness.com. That's F-I-T-Z-N-E-S-S.com. And that's, you know, I'm just everywhere there. That's your saturation of Fitz Kohler. But you can definitely get the book there. If you buy a book at fitzness.com, you get a special gift with purchase. And I sign every last one of them. Books available in hardcover, paperback, audiobook, ebook, and if you don't buy it on fitness.com, it's also available everywhere else books are sold. And then please connect with me on social media at yeah. fitness on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and don't just follow, reach out and say hi, because I love making new friends. I love it. Uh -huh. And guys, again, I encourage you. She put a super nice note in my book and I was so excited when I opened it and I saw it. So it's definitely so a, a super special touch. We're right going to leave all the links right in the description. All you got to do is uh, scroll down, click in there, go connect, buy the book, uh, get your signature in that book. And, amazing. And then join us all in the next race. Yes. <laughs> ah, so good. So good. Uh, well, with that, guys. Yes. Thank you so much for tuning into the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead and subscribe. Hit smash that subscribe button and follow us on social media at bizbrosco and if you find this episode impactful which i am sure you did don't forget to share it yes. and and yeah. leave a five-star review thank you bye guys